compelling and totally unnerving, according to the Chicago Tribune. Edward Bryant's stories have appeared in leading science fiction magazines, including Fantasy and Science Fiction, Quark, Orbit, and Again Dangerous Visions, and in National Lampoon, L.A. Free Press, and Adam. Not since Harlan Ellison has there been so energetic an author. When you read Bryant, you are in good hands, according to the New York Times. Whether our ultimate destination is utopia, dystopia, or Armageddon, we know the curve is headed somewhere. That's a truism. I suspect the curve is directed downward, perhaps completely off the graph. Consider this book a chart. These stories coordinates. So one of my colleagues recently took a little vacation. She just wanted some quiet, so she rented a cabin from the friend of a friend far off the beaten path, somewhere up north. This was late summer, and it had been dry. When she got to the cabin, which was down a dirt path, off a gravel road, off some country highway somewhere, she was disappointed. The place didn't seem to have been maintained or occupied for quite a while. It was dusty, and she said there were cobwebs everywhere. She almost decided to go home right there and then, and now she wishes she had. But instead, she got a large, leafy branch from outside and started dusting, knocking the cobwebs down. It didn't take long, she said, before the place seemed quite habitable, even cozy. At that moment, she was happy she had stayed. There was a small lake nearby and a canoe, so she spent most of the day knocking about. By the time she got back to the cabin, she was exhausted. She got the Coleman stove going and cooked herself a meal, which she enjoyed more than anything she could remember eating in months. She fell into bed with a book and a flashlight, planning to read a little, but she was asleep almost immediately. And that's the last thing she remembers. A few days later, her son decided to go up and see how she was doing, because she wasn't answering her phone, and to take her some marshmallows, chocolate, and graham crackers, which she had left out on her counter, forgotten. She's very lucky he did. When he got to the cabin, there was no response at the door, although the door was latched from the inside. Looking in the window, he could see the bed in the cabin, in the dark toward the back, was occupied by a body shape, but he couldn't quite tell what was going on. It seemed gauzy to him, hazy and white, but he was looking into a far dark corner of the cabin, so he really wasn't sure what he was seeing. He was, however, alarmed enough to break the window to get inside. When he crossed the room, it looked like there was a mummy lying in the bunk. But as he got closer, he saw it wasn't a mummy at all, but a person. And now he was sure it was his mom, wrapped from head to toe in spider webs. And there were crawling black shapes everywhere on the web and inside the web, probably emerging from sacks of spider eggs. Of course, he contacted emergency services immediately. Several weeks have passed, and his mom, my colleague, Professor Rosa, is alive and well, although changed by the experience. She says someday she'll tell me about her dreams. She's back to teaching, although she and her students have had a hard time adjusting. It's just that she looks so different now. She applies a special ointment every day, and maybe that will do some good. Eventually...